And it gives me immense pleasure to uh, begin today's session with uh, Camilla Reese. Many thanks to Michael Kahn and the Institute for Bow Biology and Ecology for holding this very interesting meeting. And I'm, I'm very pleased to be here with you today. A special thank you also goes to IBE board member Dr. Anne Louise Gittleman for inviting me and for her commitment to this institute. Dr. Gittleman knows, as do I, just how important the training at IBI, IBE is, that what you are learning and then teaching in your communities is what the world needs to know much more about now. Whether you are an engineer, an architect, a doctor, an industrial or interior designer, or someone responsible for the lives of vulnerable populations, like in schools or hospitals or retirement homes, you are on the cutting edge of health with the education offered through this institute. And I am so happy to see this year's conference focus so heavily on the pervasive electromagnetic fields in, env in our environment, an emerging public health issue that will go down in history as one of the most important mistakes ever made in the name of progress. I want to also thank three past directors of IBE who have been teachers to me on my journey. They are Larry Gust and Vicki Warren and Robert Steller, whom I originally met at a conference hosted by Dr. Deirdre Klinghardt in Seattle. Had I not had this sneak preview years ago of the potential damage from electromagnetic fields from Larry and Vicki and Robert's presentations, and also heard patient case studies from Dr. Klinghardt of people impacted by RF and ELF and how they recovered from serious neurological problems by finding and removing the invisible sources of exposure. I dread to think how long it would have taken me to figure out that I had an EMF problem when this occurred, not once, but twice. So my deepest gratitude to your former directors and to all of those who came before, including Helmut Zia, IBE's founder, and the Bau biologists in Germany. It often takes a personal health challenge for people to get serious about evaluating and remediating environments. Graduates of the Institute for Bau Biology and Ecology are ironically filling an enormous hole in our healthcare system today working precisely at the edge where health and environment converge. You are filling a hole in a system that turns a blind eye to root causes of illness, pretending that the many known sources of imbalance do not exist. You are the ones that have the real hope to offer people. You are bearers of deeper truths, counterbalancing many so-called medical professionals who would rather recommend suppression of symptoms instead of carefully evaluating and resolving a situation at its core. But there is an even more important hope that you offer society beyond the environmental detective work. What I appreciate most about the field of bow biology is its high standards for purity with regard to the built environment and the possibilities that that purity offers all of us to remember our essence and our light. The toxic world that we have created all around us and become accustomed to is a reflection of the state of society's mind. One of the sad results today is that most children have never even known good health. They have crawled on carpets off-gassing formaldehyde as toddlers, on PVC vinyl flooring, worn clothes coated in pesticides, and chemicals to prevent rotting. They've slept over 3,000 hours a year on mattresses and pillows that off-gas over five dozen volatile organic compounds, eaten chemical-laden fast food and engineered food that is altering physiological functioning, or perhaps been remotely monitored as infants by radiation-emitting baby monitors. We see the same sad story with elders and with everyone in between. It is beyond my comprehension how the collective consciousness could have gotten so cut off from the harmony found in nature, 
from the natural balance that is there to support us when we remove much of what is man-made and strive to create pristine, healthy, natural, and clean environments that mimic as best as possible the intelligence and balance in nature. We've created a world that is toxic and aesthetically unattractive and interpersonally unsatisfactory. We've lost our sensibilities as a culture and numbed our senses and forgotten what it means to be alive. I believe the principles of bow biology can play an important role in redirecting us back to true north. The standards for environmental purity that bow biology stands for can guide a hurting world back to knowing its true nature, to understanding our planetary interconnectedness, and can teach us, by example, the benefits of not soiling our nest, our homes, but also our planet. Respect for this planet, true respect for the life processes that it comprises, will be born of respect for ourselves and for the fact that we too are comprised of living systems. And this respect can only grow to the degree that we clear out our mind of false beliefs about who we are and what is of real value and begin to create, again, environments of grace. Electromagnetic fields in our environment are creating anything but environments of grace. Some mind-boggling recent examples of the insanity unfolding include radiation-emitting tracking tags now being sewn into children's uniforms to deter truancy, transmitters being put in children's pajamas so that the so-called caregivers can better monitor an infant's mood from afar, Nokia recently was issued a patent for a body tattoo where your cell phone will be able to ring under your skin. The disruption to our brain function from ever-growing layer upon layer of cumulative and chronic electromagnetic fields combined with the velocity of information that we have access to is fragmenting us continually. List, um, impairing our ability to pay attention and to learn, and preventing people of all ages from a, relating from a place of wholeness, leading increasingly to people feeling isolated in subpar states of existence, longing to connect and to experience something of meaning. And as you all know, radiating wireless smart meters that you will hear about this afternoon from Dr. Tim Sheckley that do nothing to serve the purposes of a smart grid, but that do disrupt biology, are now polluting people's homes, invading people's personal space with behavior tracking and behavior manipulating possibilities. We are in a dark age indeed, and the Institute for Bow Biology and Ecology can play an essential and pivotal role in pointing the way out of the darkness with practical knowledge of how to live in harmony with the built environment, with each other, and with nature. The Institute is a bright shining light on this planet with tremendous potential to serve society at this time. And I am so happy to be invited into this community and to offer what insights I can today about the biological effects of electromagnetic fields. I certainly don't know it all and I don't have all the answers, but I hope that the picture that I'm going to paint today will inspire you to know just how important your work is as building biologists and to encourage you to step up and take your right place in our healthcare system, collaborating closely with the medical community as well as with schools and with employers that desperately need your services to meet the unmet needs of people. So, let us begin.